So the first thing that I want to do is kind of clean this up a bit, okay? Um, so just as a recap, these are our packages, this is our middleware, this is our Mongo database connection, and these are our routes, and then this is the server port. Um, so uh, some people I've seen uh, create different folders for a database configuration, that's perfectly fine, however you want to do that. I don't feel the need, because this is only like six or seven lines, and not too bad. But what I do want to do is take out this route right here, and I want to create a separate file for all of our future routes. Okay, so up here in our app folder, um, go ahead and create a new folder called the routes. Okay, and inside of that, create a file called api.js. Okay, and then we're just going to take this route and cut it out. All right, see that looks way better, and then. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, Im implement it into this file. And remember, when we have external files, we want to go ahead and do module.exports um, because that's how we import it into our server file. Okay. So just go ahead and paste. I'm just going to move everything over. There we go. Okay. So going back to our server file, we don't need this user um, anymore. So we can just go ahead and cut that out. However, the path is going to be a little bit different. All right, so it's actually going to be slash models user. All right, and uh, basically what the two periods mean that just means you're um, you're going from the current directory. Uh, so one period means current directory. Second period means one directory behind that one. So app, and then slash models user. All right, really simple. Um, so we did that because we're going to be using it in this um, file instead, no longer in the server. And uh, so with routes, it's a little bit different than how we did it with our model. See how we did it with our model. Um, but with, with this, what we're going to do is at the very bottom, we're going to go ahead and type in return um, router. And I'm going to tell you why in a second. So. What you want to do is um, go ahead and type in function, right? And the reason for that is because we're going to return that router object, right? So go ahead and type it in there in the parentheses, okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to export whatever the route is to that object. Whenever uh, users try to access it via this slash users, okay, it's going to go ahead and access it here, and then it's going to return it to the server, all right? And... Um, so instead of app.post, it's no longer going to be app.post. What we'll do is just type in router.post. Okay. And so there we go. We're returning that router object. And all of our future routes going forward, um, they're just going to look like this router, let's say router.get, home, et cetera, right? And what that does is ensures that um, all the routes are getting returned. Don't put app.get or app.post because it's not going to return it properly. Okay. So going back to the server, what we want to do is um, go ahead and call in that file that we just created. And we'll name it, um, let's say, app routes. Okay. Wire, whoops. We'll just say, there we go. Okay, and if you need to take a second to figure out where that path is, go ahead. Um, so remember, we were using the router object, so we're going to go ahead and type that in right there. And this tells um, it tells our application, hey, use the router object with this routes, with this route file. And uh, right above that, what we want to do is go ahead and define the router, because we never actually defined it. If you go back to the API file, we never defined it. We just assumed it and started using it and then returned it. Um, but we never actually defined it. So what we do is just type in router. We're going to use something called Express Router, okay? And um, the only last thing to do is to tell the application, hey, use this, right? And remember, that's basically what a middleware is, okay? Um, so I'm actually going to cut this and put it right here in the beginning. And then I'm going to type in app.use. And we're going to say app routes. Now, it's important uh, what order you follow here. Um, because basically what this is saying, that it's going to go line by line, and it's going to say, hey, start logging all requests. Hey, start parsing the data, and then, hey, use the routes. If you put this before, then the requests aren't going to work, because it's going to get to the routes, 
the request is going to be made, but it's going to be invalid because it's not parsing it yet. So if you had this, like, say here, it would get to here and it would fail because it hasn't parsed the data. So the, 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 the order of your middleware is always very important. Okay. And uh, so one more thing that I want to do, right, is um, to make it easier to, to kind of define the difference between our front end routes and our back end routes. Um, I'm basically all I'm going to do is just type in slash API, right? And uh, so the difference is, right, is our our um, before our route was it looked like this, right? I'm not sure, I'm doing this right. Users, right? It looked just like that, and that was fine. But um, going forward, and it's kind of hard to explain this now, but going forward, our Angular routes are going to look exactly like that. So it's going to be really confusing, and they're going to conflict eventually. And so what, what I did was is I, I told the application, hey, use the routes that we created, which these are going to be all of our backend routes, but also apply this file path in front of it so that we don't get confused. So it's going to look like this, API slash users. And that's just going to help us um, deconflict the backend and the frontend routes. All right. So go ahead and give that a save, and then we're just going to test out the route to make sure that all this configuration worked properly. And um, so if you've been following along, I was actually using uh, po uh, Arc to test the routes, um, but actually now I'm using Postman because I realize that Arc doesn't work without an internet connection, and my internet connection is down right now. So this is going to work just fine. It does the exact same thing. It just looks different. Same thing. Um, so go ahead and make sure you have a post request selected and in the this is the original route that we were using but remember now for backend routes we're using um, API slash users okay so go ahead and enter username data whatever you want so I'll say username I'll say Gohan and password I'll just say DBZ and then email I'll just say some random email at gmail.com and then hit send and see if it works now it's telling us um, that it cannot post to API slash users. Um, let's see if we can't figure out why that is. Okay, so I um, I was just having technical difficulties. It was just on my side. Um, the port that I was using was no longer working, so I, I actually had to go back in and change it to 8080 um, to what it was when I originally created this project, oddly enough. Um, and then you'll see there that it's working for me. Just make sure whatever port, if you end up changing it or if you're using the original, um, just make sure this matches exactly how you've configured your application. Um, so there we go. We, we now know that our new routes is up and running. So the last thing we want to do is feed an index template. And so what that does is all of our routes are going to feed off of one template. All right. And then Angular is going to inject all of our different pages into it. OK, so um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about what that looks like. I'm just going to go ahead and, and, and show you and then and we'll just kick it off. So our app folder is going to maintain all of our backend stuff so what we can do is create a new folder called public and this folder is going to have all of our front end all of our angular stuff and all of our HTML so within that folder create a new folder called app and then a new folder within that one called views and then inside views go ahead and create your index.html file okay and so that's what that looks like. And inside your index file, just type in um, just something basic so you know it's working. We'll just say hello from index, right? And so back in our uh, server file, we want to go ahead and we want to feed that here, right? And so the way we do that is we just type in app.get. And instead of using the default, right? What we want to do is use an asterisk, and that what that is is it's going to say no matter what the user types, feed them this index page, right? So like just before, function with a request and a response, and then we're going to respond with sending a file. And so the way we want to do that is type in path dot join. And inside of join, um, type in two underscores, dir name, 
plus, and then we're going to have a file path here. And what it is, it's going to be public, exactly what we created here just now. App views index.html. Okay, so basically what it's doing is taking the current path and it's joining it with this folder so that no matter what, the user types we're going to send them this file okay and that's how we correctly in windows in windows at least and i know linux is the same way this is how you give the users the current file path right this is actually going into this directory and finding that file and sending it to the user um so one last thing we want to do is want to come up top and type in path and then just require path we don't have to do npm install. Um, this is already built in. Um, we just have to uh, call the package up here. Okay, and uh, so one last thing that we want to do is we want to make back uh, front end um, directory files, whatever you want to call it, available to to us, right? And the way we do that, right, in the Express API, there's something called a static files. And so this is how we let the front end access all of these files that we have here, right? And so we'll just do that. Um, we can do that right before the routes if we want to. It doesn't really matter. Um, well, it normally matters what order you use a middleware for, but for this one, it's going to be fine to put it here. And so it's it's very similar to what we typed down below. And basically, what it's saying is, hey, use this middleware, which is express serving a static file location All right so it's going to take the current directory name wherever this current file is plus slash public so in other words um, the front end is going to have access to this public folder and everything in it so that's why in this public folder we're going to put all of our angular controllers and stuff like that and user authentication and stuff like that so go ahead and give this a save and now we're going to test out our index file right so now we've provided the file that we want to give them and then now and then we also gave access basically is what we did here we gave them access to a static location all right and um, so you should see that your server is uh, feeding off of that index page and so if you notice here if you type in slash bunch of whatever it still works right it's it's crazy but it's still working right and the way we did that is this get request we type in an asterisk and what that means is no matter what the user types feed them this index file right and that's what we want because our index is going to be our main layout for everything okay so now this is the end of the video next what we're going to do is we're going to implement all the bootstrap and angular and all the front end core files